500. 500 to you, sir. Go on. First. 500 pounds to you. See the five. Raise two grand. Two thousand more. You don't believe my full house? You want to call, you want lessons. Otherwise, it's going to cost you money. I call. Call the 2,000. Now, for sure, I don't believe you. Three ladies takes it. How you know? Aces and nines. They were dead. Don't you wash your cards? Deal me out. Thank you, gentlemen. And, uh, ladies. 9,000, 10,000, 11,000. Oh, hello. Mr. Michelson. Thank you. And 247. Thank you. Mr. Michelson. I do hope you appreciate my embarrassment. I've won too much again. I'm delighted for you, Mr. Michaels. But a few of the members are, are feeling a bit, uh, well, it's a bit discouraging for them. You get a lot of action. Good table money for the places. But they tend not to come back, Mr. Michaels. I mean, let's face it, you are a professional and a very good one. And, uh, and, uh, and I think you know what I'm going to say. But not at all, Mr. Michaels. We'd be delighted for you to take part in the activities of the club. Not a question of being barred. Not in this establishment. We simply prefer that you do not use the poker word. So I'm barred. I did not use that word. Try a blackjack, roulette. That way you've got the edge. Playing poker, I've got the edge. Then I shall repeat. I am very sorry, Mr. Michaels. Well, I'm very sorry. You're very sorry. Maybe six months' time, eh? Possibly, Mr. Michaels. Good night. Good night, Mr. Michelson. What's the geezer's name? Dave. Dave. You all right? Yeah. Oh, well, I wouldn't mind. Uh, Dave, do you do a margarita cocktail? I do a gin and tonic cocktail, a whiskey and dry ginger cocktail, a Bacardi and Coke with ice and a twist of lemon. And that's your lot. Give us a lager. A nice continental lager. Lager connoisseur, eh? Never happened to night ale. What are you doing? What you do that for? Eh? Well, he's got to be looking for a nine, hasn't he? Well, how should I know? Well, I've just seen six cards go down. You must know what you've got in your own hand. That accounts for another three cards. There's only four possible cards he could want. Finished. Well, of course he is. You just give him the nine. Oh, don't go potty in, Morris. We're only playing for a penny a point. Penny? Deal me in. 41. Deal him in. Maverick of Endon Central, no thanks. So you lose a few quid. Just think of the experience you're gaining. Full sandpaper, this is. Oh, sorry. 
Right. No, don't start, Morris. All that pick a card. Still winning? Winning? 11 grand I dropped the other night. Yeah? Cincinnati kid must have been in town. <laughs> always mugged. Biggest win I've had in months. Oh, no wonder people are always going on about law and order. Arthur. Arthur, that is the good news. Yeah. Barred from the Beaumont. Joking. And the Intercontinental and the Royal. They're taking away my living. Well, couldn't you claim for redundancy pay? <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. It's like a doctor being struck off. One nice continental lager. Cheers, Dave. How about yourself? Sorry, I'm bloody merry. Oh, good. <laughs> Don't care. No, I mean, come on, be fair. A professional man is deprived of his living because he is too good. Is that right? That's what I come to see you about. Well, yes, I do know a few of the people who run these places. I, uh, I could have a word with, um... Who? Who could you have a word with? Nobody. Don't give me all that. What I've come to see you about is I need Terry. Excuse me? Why don't you come and see Terry if you need Terry? Well, it's no offence, Tal. I mean, uh, it's a business proposition. Absolutely right. The man has come to see me about seeing you. Oh, see? No, I'm sorry. Sorry, a bit out of order there. He's coming to see you about seeing me. Got it. What is it then? Find the lady down Oxford Street. Greeks. Big game. Camden Town. I thought it would be a nice little trip to Monte Carlo. Don't knock it. It's a big game. Cash. Listen. Three kebab houses changed hands over one deal there last week. Be handy, wouldn't it? You'd end up with a kosher kebab house. <laughs> Aren't you? Rough game. Rough people. But not all that clever. So I'm odds on to walk away a winner. Why? Why? Terry, he's the best. No question. Number one, the man. So I walk out a winner, but the only question is, do I get back to Hendon with all the winnings? Definitely. Because Terry is going to sit up with you all night and ride shotgun all the way home. Is he? Well, of course he is. I mean, there's got to be. Well, how much in it for you? Da, 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 da. Morris. Terry, time you got drinking. Morris and me will discuss the uh, business. Yeah, hey, apart from anything else, it's going to be entertainment, isn't it? I'll get the drinks. special place for you. Uh, you have a preference? What about next to the dealer? Certainly, of course. A brave player, that's what we like. Now, this is Mr. Doxiadis. Hello. George, uh, he'll make nice suits for you. <laughs> Hello. Christophorus? Just Chris. Oh, this is Nick, our dealer. Uh, your friend also wishes to play? Just a spectator. Ah, well, we don't like him to wander around the table. What about your friend here? Oh, this is Andy, a friend of Mr. Doxiadis. He always sits there. Oh, I see. He always sits there. Your friend can drink at the bar. <laughs> Now, what is your game, Mr. Michelson? Five cards done. No jokers. No leaders and bleeders. No whole card wire, just straight stud poker. Good. Like the cowboys play. That's it. 
All the way from Kansas City to Camden Town. Beautiful. Well, we play table stakes, no limit, 10 pound ante, and the house takes 5% out of every pot. Nick, would you like to call the table? Mr. Doxiadis plays call a pass. George is a thousand and a thousand behind. Chris, the same. Mr. Zardanides, 2,000 table, 2,000 behind. So, for you, Mr. Michelson. Two thousand of plastic, and I'll play another two behind. Hello. Just like watching. Well, no. Sometimes I like doing as well. How about you? I only work here. Oh. Well, in that case, what's Greek for light ale? Right, gentlemen, let's play poker. Ace to bet. Win the first one, lose all night, eh? <laughs> what the hell? Ten. Call. 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 No, I'll. Pair of aces to speak. Five hundred. Hey, come on, come on, let's keep it in English, shall we? Mr. Doxiadis doesn't understand English. He understands five red chips, doesn't he? Fair enough, Chisho Hiliadiris, He wants to raise you. Just let him shove the chips in. I'm not colour blind. And I raise. Promise, Mr. Doxiadis says he calls. Check. Suddenly he speaks English. Look, you've got it, you bet it. I'm not going to bet to two pairs, am I, Mr. Peroxide? Doxiadis. The name is Doxiadis. All right. Mr. Doxiadis. I check. So it's a showdown. You pulled a full house. King's on top. I'm betting three aces. He raises me. And he actually calls my re-raise. I feel lucky. Mr. Doxiade says. Yeah, yeah. I understand him when he speaks English. He won the money, Morris. Well, didn't he just? Give me another two grand. Not doing all that well, your pal, is he? No, neither am I. See, I would have thought by now I'd have arranged to meet you somewhere tomorrow night. You don't say things like that to Greek girls. What don't you say to Greek girls? <laughs> Nothing, apparently. This is my boyfriend, Harry. Harry? No, Harry. Harry. It's a Greek name. What, like a good old-fashioned cockney Harry? That's right. You ain't got a H in it. That's handy. I mean, handy. <laughs> yeah, they're funny, those H's, aren't they? Uh, now, my old mum, she always used to call Anthony Eden 
Anthony Eden. Who? Prime Minister. He used to wear a black hat. A Homburg. <laughs> Good here, isn't it? Very nice to speak. One hundred. Cool. Mr. Doxy, have these calls. In. Pair of aces. Pair of jacks. Straightening. No help. Price of poker is going up, gentlemen. Four hundred. Mr. Doxy, had his corns. Why not? Too expensive. Trey, no help. Four, no help. Straightening. Six hundred. How much you got there, Morris? Twelve hundred. Nothing behind. I'll set you in. Three jacks on the table, and you called a four hundred pound bet. Then you hit the case, Jack. You spent all that trying to fill an inside straight. Card Louis, eh? I mean, what's going on here? What are you saying, Mr. Michelson? I've got a five-year-old who wouldn't play poker like that and expect to win. Are you saying it's crooked or something? I'm just saying I've seen... All Morris is saying is you win a few, you lose a few. Are you saying we're cheating in this, my own personal club? I'm just saying I've You're not it. saying anything. Shut up. Look, you got the dough. No sweat, OK? Are uh, you here to look after him? Well, yeah, but five to one, I don't fancy the odds. Right, Bunton. So. Now you can talk. First red light on the way home. When you've done your money, that's when you start to think about it. You really got us both done. Never mind a dough. It was bent. Bloody lines. How can you be so sure? You didn't get the right cards, that's just bad luck. What are you talking about? Poker's odds, percentages, good players win, bad players lose. Luck. Right. I told you, it's bent. It's not all that difficult. Dealing seconds, they call it. Look, king, on top. You deal. One, two, three. Four. You want a king? There it is. All you need in poker. An edge, you do it three or four times in the night when there's a few really nice pots, you win. Well, how come you kept on playing then? <sighs> it's hard to spot. There's other people losing. Like that. That little geezer, what's his name? Uh, yeah. George. You got a puzzle like that, you don't need to cheat. Probably Dr. Bund every week is a bad player. The only time I was certain was on that last big hand. Hey? Well, that had to be Ben. There's something nice about Hendon this time of the day. Must be the sun coming up over Winchbore Hill. Did you play? Well, I know where they're supposed to go. 
Geezer taught me in Chelmsford. Do you want a game? Well, I'm not all that good. Tell you what, I'll give you a pawn and a bishop and it's £100 or 20. A bit tasty, are you? No. Come on! I'll give you two pawns and a bishop and it's £200 or 50. Morris, I've just seen you drop six grand and now you want to hustle me out of 50 quid. What's going on? Yeah, sorry. Forget it. You're skint, aren't you? So what's all this then? Just fun? Notice anything missing? Well, it's a quarter to eight and I don't see any Jewish princess. Also, I don't hear the tiny pitter-patter of little Clark sandals. Left me. Why can't I be a wholesale tobacconist like her father? Bought her another house. Now she wants the kids to go to Millfield. That's a horse, isn't it? Millford. Millford is the horse, Millfield is the school, specialises in sports. Suddenly she wants my son to be the Jewish Nastasi and the girl's going to be Chrissy Ever. I mean, the lovely kids, but don't button on for Wimbledon. I thought you were the big winner. Mug for 11 grand the other night, drop six tonight, come on. I mean, when you're a pro, you mustn't be greedy. I settle for seven, eight hundred a week. Sometimes it's hard to get a bit of action. Meanwhile, Maureen is murdering me. Take, take, take. Can't pay Arthur, he's 300. 300? How well, I many wait a few days, will you? <laughs> oh, yeah. 300, eh? You could all sell a painting. They're prints. The frames are worth more than the pictures. I thought you were an art lover. I'm a frame lover. <laughs> like you said. Or front. I want it down. I've only got cheese. Yeah, use the same slicer for it too, I reckon. Now listen, you don't throw a moody on me. It wasn't my fault. 300 quid. I don't get knocked for that sort of dough. And what about my 60? Don't exactly seem like a fair split, does it? Well, obviously you were going to get bunged a bit more. Oh, yeah. Of course. Man did a deal, a man pays. The man is skint. Well, you've been over his drum. He's got goods and chattels, hasn't he? Has he got what? Oh, stereo, maybe? Colour telly? A couple of watches? Now, listen, I'm not a tally man. Anyway, I thought he was supposed to be a mate of yours. He is a drinking acquaintance. He owes, he pays. All right. I'll tell you what. The next time he plays, you go with him. Get paid out on the spot then, wouldn't you? The next time he plays? Yeah. <laughs> What's he going to use for money? I don't know. I think he's going to ask you for a sub. Where are you going? Hello, sweetheart. Who gave you the love bite? Who do you think? He must really like you. Are they all in there? Yeah, I don't think you're very welcome. Don't be silly. Last time I came here, all they did was pick up money. Look, don't make trouble. Harry always carries a knife. You deserve better than that, you know. Cheers. Do relax, Harry. I've come here on a mission of goodwill. What do you want? Well, I wouldn't say no to a cup of coffee. Turkish. Greek. Oh, that's right. Sorry, my mistake. Excuse me. Look, uh, 
Morris was out of order the other night. He wants to win his money back. What? You're coming around team handed Harry, this isn't a war. The man lost, he don't like losing. He accuses us of cheating. Yeah, well, that was just the heat of the moment. When you're a gambler, you know what it's like. Good player, bad loser. So he sends you to apologize. <laughs> if you like, yeah. Look, it's like a betting shop, innit? The odds on favourite goes down and all the punters start screaming that it's got to be bent. Five minutes later, they're back in, filling out their betting slips. Now, with Morris, you're not only talking about money. It's a question of pride. Fernanda Fedo. So, he thinks he's a winner, eh? Yeah. I appreciate you coming here like a man. So, okay, you tell Morris, same time, same place, same game. Same cards. <laughs> Who knows, Terry? That's the luck of the draw. Cheers. Look here, if you can afford to play, you can afford to pay. Otherwise, Terry has a quiet night in front of his telly. I said I'm playing. I haven't said I've got the stake yet. But where are you going to get it? What are your contacts like in the motor train? Very good. How about a 1977 Lotus Eclat? Never raced or rallied. One careful owner. Genuine 21,000 miles on the clock. Good music. Faultlessly maintained. Genuine reason for sale. Oh, as it happens, I may be able to help. Cash. Ah. The banks are still open. Now, you see, the trouble with this, it's a specialist motor. I mean, price-wise, they just fall out of bed. Forget it, I'll go to a dealer. What do you want a dealer for? I've got the book. Lotus Eclat. S registration. S. What are you asking? Seven grand. Seven? You're joking. It's under five in the book. Show me. Where? Oh, the book is confidential. For the trade only. I can't flash the book around. I get this from a very special contact. I should say four and a half. Hey. You've had a smash there. Oh, I'm sorry. That's where we edit it the night I was done over. Ah, uh, it's still a floor. You say five? Yeah, I'm being a fool to myself. I'll take you five, but there's one condition. Yeah? I come back to you before midday tomorrow and I give you five, two, and the motor is mine again. Yeah, what sort of a deal is that? It's a steal, that's what. I oh, don't come back tomorrow, you've got yourself a motor. I do come back, you've earned yourself 200 quid just for parking it overnight. Midday tomorrow? Yeah. Registration book. Keys. Morris, you got yourself a steak. Thing is, Arthur, you said you'd get me a nice, clean four-year-old Capri. Yeah, I will, Dave, I will, but I mean, a Lotus Eclat. I thought it was a personal friend. You like first refusal. See, with a motor like this, you get a bit of respect. Yeah. I've heard they just fall out of bed, price-wise. You've heard what? Specialist motor like this? Look, if you're talking about inflation, a set of wheels like this is an investment. In two years' time, you'll be making money. I mean, the stereo's better than the one you got in the club. Yeah, that flash, Morris. You imagine how he must have caned him. Morris? There's nothing to do with Morris. It's a second car. Bought it for his missus. What does she use it for? End to Harrods and back again. I'm not kidding, Dave. Seven and a half in the book. To you, six nine ninety, and I won't even be getting a drink out of it. Six how much? Well, forget the odd ninety. We won't say nothing about delivery charges. Forget the delivery, Arthur. It's out of my league, honest. Oh dear. Try to do a favour. Look, have you thought of consulting the missus? They love a motor like this. She wants a caravan. Ah, oh, well, funny, dear. I might be able to help you. Look, I've got a friend who's got a clean dormobile, P registration. He's had a stroke, so it's not even run in. Keep looking for a nice, clean four-year-old Capri, Arthur. Excuse me, you've got the timing. Eh? Cheers. What's that? Let Arthur have you right over on that car deal. You reckon? Yeah. According to the evening papers, 
He's only got it for the night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel good. I slept like a baby for three hours. Dealt with a few hands. Had a nice light supper. Scrambled eggs, smoked salmon, a few glasses of shabby. Feel like a winner. You said that last time. Morris, the game is crooked. Only on a few big hands. I've told you. They'll let me win a few tonight. Don't worry. I'm gonna have an edge. How? Watch me. No hard feeling, Morris. How much you want to play tonight? Five grand on the table. Ah, I think Morris is out for revenge. A big open game, eh? Could be. Let's go, Nick. Hello, Harry. Aces over wins. Raise four. I'll keep you honest. Top straight. Pair of queens. Possible flush. No hill. Queens to bed. Check. Check. Three hundred. Fold. Two pairs, aces up. Two pairs, tens up. Flushing. Aces and nines to speak. Check. Five hundred. Fold. With a raise. Another thousand. And another thousand. Cool. Ah. Oh. Come on. What about another grand? Court. Full. Ace is over. I read you for the nines over. Brave call. He's having a bit of luck, your mate. Oh, I don't know, Harry. According to Morris, it's a game of skill. You are a big winner, Morris, eh? Big. I'm up about three grand. Long way to go. Keep him low, Nick. I saw that car. Then I don't want it. Do I burn it? It's a misdeal. Shuffle, cut, and deal again. That's a house rule, isn't it? <sighs> well, I don't think. Chief for now, Previn Narchi, see about Narchi. Yes, Mr. Doxiadis agrees. New deal. Okay, gentlemen. King to bet. Tony. Cold. Gone. In. Cold.
Straight flushing. Straightening. No help. Ace nine. Sorry. Ace queen to bed. In. Make it three. Straight flushing still. No help. Pair of nines. Pair of nines to bed. Four hundred. Straight flushing, still. Three nines. Looks nice, Morris. It's got to be a grand. Looks beautiful. Let's make it three. Okay, I've got to hey, do it. Hey, just a minute. Don't mess around with the deck, Nick. What do you mean? I mean, don't mess around with it. Leave it alone. The deal is over. You're making me nervous. Leave the cards, Nick. I've got to do it, Maurice. What have you left there? Four grand? Yeah. Well, that's the raise, then. Four of them. You just came second, Chris. Very lucky in love. So, Stella, give us a brandy. You want a drink, Harry? Seventeen thousand pound, Morris. And you only started out with five grand. We never had a bigger winner. Well, Nick, that was a nice. There you go, son. Can we get a cab around here? Oh, okay. sure, sure. Harry, cab for Mr. Microson. Okay. No. Yeah, uh, you haven't got a carrier bag we can borrow, have you? You mini cab? Yes. Hathaway Drive, hand a note, son. Do you know where it is? Okay, no English. Theo, Bartuso Spirito Alexandru. When he's passaria, pare mas telefono. Okay, catalava. Lad no misona muferu kana problema afti. Morris, you just made the first bum call of the evening. to go to Hendon, not King's Cross. Yeah, yeah, Hendon. Well, which way are you going then? No English. <laughs> right, 
right, it's over. You're either going to get uh, throttled or nicked. This way, we all go to hospital together. Don't we, Zulba? Haceme! Then Boronado. It's all right, mate. Don't tip him. Just don't tip him. for Stella. Morris? Hello, town. Oh, there, what is it, ribs? Yeah, I done my foot. How about you? No, no, just stand, it's all right. How'd you feel? I've got six to four with the doctor. I'll be out of this lot inside of ten days. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, if you decide to play patience, you might need one of these. Andy. <clears throat> Do you want to tell me anything? I told you. All a good poker player needs an edge. What, up his sleeve? <laughs> oh, don't, don't, don't make me laugh. My ribs are killing me. <laughs> Look, come on in. Oh, no. How'd you manage it? You remember the first time we went down a Greek place? Yeah, of course I do. Well, I noticed the make of cards they were using. Went out, bought a few decks, stashed the aces in my pockets. Do you mean to tell me when we walked into that club, you had pocketfuls of aces? You were taking a bit of a chance, weren't you? Well, I only used them five times. Five?! I didn't want to be greedy. Notice... Notice I won three nice parts with aces up when I was supposed to be second best. Eh? <laughs> I think Nick was beginning to tumble it by that last big hand. He dealt me a flush. Now, the second round of betting, there were two aces on the table. Well, hey, anybody who paired with the nicest spades in the hole was going to stick around for one more bet. And when they didn't, I knew it was still in the pack. Do you follow me? No. I shoved me own ace into me own hand. Give myself a royal flush. I've got it. And that's why you threw all your cards on the table so quickly after you'd won. <laughs> right. Held onto the ace, threw the other ones into the pack, so even if Nick had a quick count up, he wasn't going to come across another ace. Hey. <sighs> yeah, the rest that driver. No, no. He's in the ward next door. No, I told the old Bill it wasn't his fault somebody else carved him up. You got a big art tell. Leave it out. You took 12 grand off his pals. I thought we'd done enough damage for one night. Mind your ribs. I'll tell you what, I'll pop in tomorrow, bring you some grapes. Cheers. Won't well, forget it. Yeah, tell. Bring Arthur with you. I'll square him up. Yeah, I'll be seeing him later. Your motor! Uh, tell, where's my clothes? Me, ow, me clothes! Uh, nurse! All right, all right. No, nurse! Nurse! I'll find a nurse, all right? Tell. 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 One owner motor. I'm sure we could have gone for 8 two fifty. I mean, be fair, it is my train.
Arthur, Arthur, you're taking a right liberty, you know that. Oh, <laughs> a double liberty. Twelve o'clock, the man said. Well, it's only just gone, isn't it? Twenty-two minutes past. You're fast. Twelve, twenty-two and forty-eight seconds, Greenwich Mean Time. And I can tell you the time in New Delhi on this piece. You may notice we had a bit of trouble. Look, we did a deal. We touched hands. I'll leave it out. Look, in business, I go by the book. You know what you are, don't you? Huh? What? On your own. Since when? Since 12.22 and however many seconds it says on your quartz intercontinental barometer and timepiece. Hello, Arthur. Hello, Morris. You're Norman, you got the seven and the five in the wrong places. Had a bit of luck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good night. Hang on to those. Uh, yeah, I've got the bread for you. Uh, now, there's five grand I owe you. That's two of it. Oh. There's the other three. Oh, and it's uh, 200 for the overnight parking. And uh, that's three from the other night. I'm going to have to sit down a minute. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, you, you, you've forgotten something. What? Last night. Oh, no, no. Hotel already. Oh. Don't worry, you'll get yours. I'm not worried. Of course I'm not worried. You're all right. You want anything? No. Glass of water? No. All this gambling lark. You're going to give it up now? Arthur. Oh, I'm a winner. You can't always be a winner, my lad. You want to bet? Cheers, Tom. I wouldn't lay odds on that, Arthur. You see, Morris always has an edge. Here. What did he pay you for last night? 